What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to take a look at the July 19th edition of Impact, the go-home show to Slammiversary. And if you guys were able to check out my latest edition of the Impact Report, you will know that Impact has officially sold out Slammiversary. Um, today, they let us know that when they were in the process of setting up the arena, they apparently had some more space than they originally originally anticipated, so they have released a limited amount of tickets. Depending on when you view this video, there may not be any left. So, on to Thursday's episode of Impact. Good show, go-home show. This was to sell you guys on Slammiversary. If you weren't already sold, I was very invested, and I still am. So, they, they already had me. So, we open the show with P.D. Williams versus Killer Cross. This is P.D. Williams trying to get his redemption for, well, the attacks that Killer Cross had done on the entire locker room that was originally blamed on P.D. Williams, and uh, this did not go how P.D. was hoping it would go. Um, right out of the gate, P.D. tried to get all his offense in. However, much like uh, two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, when uh, Falaba and Killer Cross faced off, um, Killer Cross just kind of absorbed all of Fala's blows, and that's pretty much what happened here. Um, Cross controlled for a while. He just threw Petey around the ring. Petey was able to get some offense in. He was using his speed uh, to his advantage. However, Killer Cross hits that nasty Saito suplex, and he starts to choke out Petey. At this point, he's just kind of feeling pity for PD, so he lets go, and he goes, you know what, go for the Canadian Destroyer. He sets Killer Cross up. Killer Cross just stands up as PD's unable to hit it, throws PD down with an Alabama slam, chokes him out, and that was all. Another very vicious match for Killer Cross. Um, curious to see where they go from here, if he's... Going to start picking on some smaller guys and then build his way up or how they're going to go about it. So uh, we will see next week, hopefully. So we head over to the virtual studio. They hype Slammiversary, the rest of the show. It's kind of what they do after the first match or segment. Um, so that's pretty standard. We go backstage and Joe Hendry's there. He's doing a photo shoot. Uh, Grado comes up to him and kind of asks what the deal was last week with what Eli had said. And I guess if there was any truth to him and Katarina, and he kind of blows it off. He tells him he's got a surprise for him, and we learn that it's going to be Eli Drake versus Joseph Hendry. And then uh, after that, the photo shoot continues. So we head out to the ring, and Gama Singh is in the ring, and he is introducing the Desi Hit Squad, Gersinder, and Rohit, getting a ton of heat, so he's doing his job. Um, still, still needs some polishing here. It seems like uh, Gama's... I don't know if he's not comfortable or he's just not invested in the character. I, I'm I'm just trying to figure out what's what's going on here because it just doesn't seem like he's fully fully there. Um, I don't know, just something about his body language is showing it. But uh, so this is Gersinder and Rohit versus KM and Falaba. This is from what happened backstage. I think it was last week uh, where Gama was uh, running down both of them. Stuff, you know, KM, everything's coming out of his mouth. Followed by everything's going in his mouth. So, match starts off. Ba starting off strong using his size and strength. Um, the Desi Hit Squad ends up working behind the referee's back. Double team and follow Ba. Ba gets the hot tag to KM. Crowd's going crazy like they always are for these guys. I hope they don't screw this up. They, they have something here with these two men. So, hopefully, Impact. Uh, Stays the course with the two of them. They hit multiple steamrollers on Rohit and Gersinder. Um, it looks like KM and Ba are going to get the win here. Ba goes up top for the bonsai drop, I believe, on Gersinder. Rohit takes out KM, knocks Ba down. Gama Singh gets up on the apron, so he's distracting the ref while all this is going on. Gersinder kind of rolls up Falaba with his feet on the ropes, and the Desi Hit Squad get another victory. So I would assume somewhere down the line, they are either going to get a tag shot or they're going to keep gaining victories, and uh, we will see what happens. So we got a video package of LAX and the OG's feud. Um, 
very good video put, you know, well put together. Impact's always done a fantastic job with these, and they're really good for, they've, they've done such a good job with this. Um, we kind of got this throughout the whole night, just little recaps of all the feuds going into Slammiversary. And we get our next match, which is Joe Hendry versus Eli Drake. Um, Joe Hendry's entrance is absolutely ridiculous with him singing his theme song. Um, before the match takes place, both men are in the ring. Hendry grabs the mic, and uh, he plays a video of Eli Drake dressing up. Apparently, this is what, it, what he does on his YouTube page. Um, and it says he says that Eli is the biggest dummy of them all. And uh, Eli's like, you know, thanks for plugging my YouTube page, and then hits him with the mic. And then the match starts. Good back and forth match. Very similar uh, wrestlers. And um, Eli ends up setting up for the gravy train. However, Hendry counters it, rolls up Eli, and he gets the win. To everybody's surprise, um, I believe they kind of threw this match in there because they were unsure of what Eli Drake was going to do, if he was going to resign or not. So I think they wanted us to at least get a match between the two of them because I know that was what a lot of people were hoping for. Um, but after the match, Katarina and Joe celebrate, and Grado's kind of looking confused there for a second. However, he just kind of goes with the flow, and the three of them end up leaving together. So up next, we have Andrew Everett versus Desmond Xavier, or so we thought. As soon as both men get in the ring, Eddie Edwards comes out through the crowd. Both men leave the ring, leaving the referee alone. Edwards has kendo stick in hand, just starts beating the crap out of the referee. He grabs a mic, and he says, the, he says, The time has come. This Sunday, there's going to be violence and so much blood. I'm going to make you bleed, Tommy. And then this brings a We Want Tommy chant from the crowd. Uh, he says, Dreamer will be laying in a pool of his own blood. And when he looks up, he is going to see Eddie is the true innovator of violence. At this point, some fan goes, no, you're not. So that, that was funny. I got a kick out of that. It was just perfectly timed. Um, and he tells Sl uh, Tommy at Slammiversary, he is going to be his never-ending nightmare. Um, this was definitely a promo from a madman who has lost touch with reality. Um, Eddie is just playing the role very well. Um, didn't expect this out of him, but he's doing a hell of a job. I'm really wondering where they go with this post -slam Um Oh, this part was fantastic. Um, more Madison Rain, do young stuff, and this is what has invested me in the match between the two of them. It has been everything outside the ring, and I'm glad Impact has been able to do that because... Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Madison Rain. Um, she's a good worker, but as far as her character goes. But however, during all this stuff, she's been absolutely fantastic. So Madison Rain wakes up. She's in a funeral home. She looks around. She sees a bunch of pictures of herself. I believe her kids, her and Josh together. Um, so apparently she is at her own funeral. She goes up to the casket, opens it up, sees herself inside. Kind of, what the hell? Sits down, all of a sudden a man comes up, says, you know, are, are you okay? She kind of ignores him, looks back at him. All of a sudden he's got the white face paint on uh, with the black around his eyes, much like Sue Young, and he says, your time has come. Uh, she leaves the room. All of a sudden a little girl comes up to her, says, "Are you, do you know where my mommy is? She says, no. Looks down, looks back up. Little girl has the white face paint, the black around her eyes. Says, your time has come. So Madison then wakes up again. She's out in the forest, I guess, wherever they were last week. All of a sudden, blood rains down on her. She's getting flashbacks of all that's happened between her and Sue Young and last week and everything preceding that. And then we end with Sue Young saying, your time has come. And it's just, just they've been doing such a good job. I really, really hope we get all of this in a, any Sue Young feud. I hope they're that invested in her that they put that much effort into everything she does. Um, we will see when the time comes. So up next, we have Sammy Callahan versus Greg Osborne. Um, Sammy comes out wearing the Zero hat uh, and Pentagon's mask in his hand. 
He just beats the crap out of Osborne. He was just doing this to send a message. He hits that pile driver, much like Mick Foley, who Mitch, Mick Foley gave uh, Sammy his blessing to use it uh, on Twitter. He puts the mask on Pentagon, starts belittling Pentagon, and he eventually hits the get out of here for the win. After the match, Callahan grabs the mic and says that Impact Management wants him to put over the pay-per-view so they can make some money, which they would obviously do that because he is the draw. Um, this brings Pentagon up on the top, on the tri Titantron, and he says he will demonstrate why Impact is his house on Sunday. So we get some more from the two of them later on. Uh, so up next we have Allie and Kiara Hogan versus Tessa and Shotzi. Um, they did this exactly how I wanted them to, and that was we didn't get Tessa or Allie as the legal competitors in the match. We got just a little between them, and that was it. Just enough to uh, to give us what we want Sunday because uh, you could obviously tell the intensity between the two and that it was just waiting to blow up. Um, but it was a decent back-and-forth match. Allie was pinning Shotzi at one point. Tessa comes in, breaks it up. Allie kicks her. That was the only contact between the two of them. Two get face-to-face. Kiara Hogan comes in the ring. I think Tessa got taken out. She ends up on the outside. Shotzi, a little later on, goes to tag Tessa in. Tessa drops off the apron and says, I didn't sign up for this. This is your problem now. She leaves. Allie ends up hitting the code breaker on Shotzi, and they get the win. So, more good building toward their match at Slammiversary. So we go backstage, and OVE is looking for Pentagon. That's Sammy and the Chris Brothers. All of a sudden, the Chris Brothers disappear from Sammy's side, and we go to commercial. Come back from commercial. We get the reveal of the mystery knockout, and it is indeed Scarlett Bordeaux. A lot of people were speculating that she was the one, and we will see her next week. Um, I really don't know much about her, so if you guys have any clips that I should check out, um, or any information like that, please drop it in the comment section below. I'd greatly appreciate that. So we go backstage again. Dave and Jake finally end up meeting up. Uh, they walk together into a room. They think they see Pentagon. They run up and attack him. However, it was Sammy with the Pentagon mask on, mouth taped, tied to a chair. Um, the real Pentagon shows up, takes out both Chris brothers, breaks their arms, um, and we're getting flashbacks of everything that's kind of happened between all of them. And uh, as Sammy is tied up at the chair, he's basically crying. Uh, Pentagon kind of goes up to him, plays with his hair and everything, grabs it, and just tells him, zero fear. So it, it was a really well-done backstage segment. I, I like this. Match should be fantastic. Um, but yeah, good stuff. And... Well, I guess this is the main event. It's uh, Moose, and he comes out, and he says that he's perfectly been, uh, purposely been away from the Impact Zone for the last few weeks because he's been getting ready for Slammiversary. He calls out Ares, calls him a bitch-ass, you know, the typical stuff. He says, you know, if you're not going to come out here, I'll come back there and find you. Ares pops up on the screen. He says, Moose, you're making this too easy for me. Uh, he says, you're, I'm playing chess while you're playing checkers. And he says, I'm not coming out there just because you decided to show up this week. So, obviously, Ares was using this as a distraction. Moose is staring at the screen. Ares comes through the crowd, in, enters the ring, low blows Moose, hits him in the back with a chair. Ares is, you know, kind of standing there holding the belt up high. Moose is able to get up. Ares turns around, he grabs Ares, Moose throws him into the turnbuckle, picks up the chair, goes to take Ares' head off, Ares ducks, leaves the ring with his title in hand, looking scared, and that's the end of the show. So, not a whole lot going on, just kind of wrapping things up, uh, I guess giving us some stuff to move post anniversary. we'll see what happens with Killer Cross. The whole Joe Hendry, Eli Drake, Grado situation. Um, 
considering Eli has re-signed with the company. I'm wondering if they're going to actually get a full program between the two of them. Um, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I have for you guys tonight. Um, I will be joining Robert Does Wrestling's podcast to do a Slammiversary pre-show tonight at 9 Eastern. Um, I'll leave you guys a link to his page that you can check out there. Tomorrow, I'll have my own predictions and preview show for Slammiversary. Uh, probably not going to do an impact report on Sunday, but I will catch you guys Sunday evening for my Slammiversary review. So, thanks for checking out my video, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.